when I initially started YouTube, I saw this one booktuber, I can't remember who it was, but she said that in the life of a YouTuber, there will come a time where you have to film a video with wet hair. Well, this time has finally come for me. Hello everybody, it's Jenny, and welcome to the booktube club of March and February, because I only read two books in February and I thought it would be kind of a sad video if I posted it extra, so I kind of just skipped it. But this month I will present to you all the books that I read and it's a total of... I can't remember again. The first book that I read in February was Visions and Silver, which is the third book in the other series. The first two books are Written and Read and Murder of Crows and the book was published in March and I got an art. I don't know if you guys know, I really really like Written and Read and Murder of Crows. It's been on my uh, top 10 of 2014. I've been talking about it a lot on my channel, especially recently. And this book didn't disappoint. It's urban fantasy. It has werewolves, vampires, humans, blood prophets in it. But it's a very different take on urban fantasy. It's not, you know, that punk gothic grunge take that a lot of books have. It's basically a book where different species have to try to live with each other and the conflicts that arise through misunderstandings. And I just really, really like the characters and the character development and plot development and everything just makes sense and there are great friendships in it. It's not just rivalry and love, but there are just a lot of great companionships in it, which makes the third book equally as good as the first two. And if you haven't read it yet, I highly, highly, highly recommend the series. Like, highly recommend it. Just just go read it, please, please, pretty please. The next book is actually a short story, which was, ha 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 ha, the second book that I read in February. Do you see now why my February month was really sad? And it's the short story by Cassiano Clare um, regarding Simon, what's his name? Simon Lewis from uh, The Mortal Instruments. And it's called Welcome to the Shadowhunter Academy. Um, so it's a series of short stories. The first one got published last month. I think there's gonna be a new one each month. It's kind of like a, the Bane Chronicles. And the first book was really hard, like really, really sweet. And I really, really liked it because it shows you the Shadowhunter Academy and how Simon, you know, how he's coping after losing his memory and how he feels disappointed because he can't be the person who his past friends want him to be like Clary and Isabel and Jason, whatever. Well, Jace not so much, but you know what I mean. Um, but I really like the way how, and everybody in the Shadowhunter uh, Academy admires him for something um, which he can't remember he's ever done. But I think this one, I connect to these short stories a lot more than to the Brave Bane Chronicles. Like they have a lot more of the mortal instrument type of writing style feel to it. Um, than the other one, but then it's only the first one, so who knows how the future ones go. Next, I read Wuthering Heights, which was supposed to be a read-along with my friend Maureen over at Maureen Kiwi, but that kind of failed because first of all, we both didn't really have time, it took us a couple weeks to get into it, and then she finished it, and I just kind of read maybe like 10 pages a day, and my progress was really slow. It turned out I didn't really, really enjoy it. Like the characters, they're very irrational. All the things that they're doing seems very arbitrary, and it's like overly emotional. And I know that uh, when it was published, it was known to be very unconventional because they don't really follow manners and rules of the British society of the 18th century or 19th century, whenever this book is set. But to me, it's basically like a 18th century YA novel gone wrong in my eyes. The story didn't really give me anything and the characters, I didn't really learn a lesson from the characters. All I learned after reading this book is that the characters are really, really, all really horrible and that's basically it. Next, I read a book that has been all over booktube since I think February and that's The Red Queen which is like the next dystopian YA fantasy book and I like The Red Queen, don't get me wrong. Oh, I look like a zebra right now. It's very cliche. There is a plot twist in the end. And my favorite line in this book is the part where the main character is asked to revolt, basically. And all she says like, why should I do that? Am I supposed to risk everything just for a stupid teenage love? And I was like, yes! Finally! Someone finally got it! That was like a holy moment in my YA dystopian reading career. I was just like, oh my god. But otherwise than that, she was a very typical heroine and there are typical heroes and typical villain arcs and like I liked it. It's something which I will continue reading, but it's not something which, you know, kind of like blew my mind. I was like, oh my god, no it's not. 
it was okay, it was good, you know, if you like dystopian, if you like YA, if you like a little bit fantasy and with powers and stuff like that, kind of remind me a little bit of the young elites, if you like something in that kind of direction, then you should definitely go check it out. Then I read one of my most anticipated books of this year, and it's The Winner's Crime, and I loved The Winner's Curse. The Winner's Curse is YA fantasy, but I just really loved the characters because they had like proper heads on their shoulders, like they made proper decisions, I like in comparison to Red uh, Queen, I like the world building, I like the character development. The winner's curse, on the other hand, like, I don't know where Marie Rutkowski is going with these characters, but she has taken miscommunication to another level. Like, it's on Mount Everest right now, you know? In the beginning, it was somewhere, I don't know, on um, maybe a little hill in the valley, and you could kind of oversee everything, like all the motives, and you could kind of understand why the characters were the way they were, but now it's just like, woo! I enjoyed the book, but it kind of lost all the elements that I loved about The Winner's Crime. So, we'll see how the last book goes. Hopefully it'll be good. And the last book that I read was Böse Wolf by Nina Neuhaus, which is a German crime novel. There is an English translation to that book. Oh, I look like a zebra again, yay! I love natural lighting and I look totally washed out, but okay, let's just continue. Um, it's called Big Bad Wolf in English and it's a crime novel set um, in the area of Frankfurt and they basically find a dead girl um, in the river and uh, the main characters are two policemen or detectives and they have to try to solve the case and they find connections and start connecting the dots. The first half is a little bit slow but the second half just picks up and everything just blows up. I'm not gonna spoil you on what happens but it's crazy, it's pretty crazy and the second half definitely made the book and I really enjoyed it and there is some really weird stuff going on. So if you're like sensitive towards um, topics like abuse and violence and crime, maybe don't pick it up, but if you like a good crime novel, like a realistic crime novel, then give it a try. Give it a try. There is an English translation of it. That was my month of February and March, and thanks for watching my video. Thanks for putting up uh, with me becoming a zebra and turning back into human. You know, I think I am like a... Is there a zebra? Shapeshifter, what are what are we called? Wear zebras? Wear zebra. Look, I'm even wearing a zebra shirt. Woo! That was not intentional. Anyways, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.